friends, it's Miss Gina, and this is my good friend Pinto Bean. And Pinto Bean is my pet chihuahua. And Pinto, I think you would really like the story that I'm going to be reading today because it's all about pets. Well, it's about one, one special pet in particular, a little kitty. And I know that you like cats too, right? He's not answering, but he does. Well, let me put Pinto Bean down and get started with our book. <clears throat> the name of our book is The Christmas Day Kitten. It was written by James Harriet, illustrated by Ruth Brown, and published by St. Martin's Press. So this story was written a long time ago, and it was written by a veterinarian. The name of the veterinarian was James Harriet. So let's find out about the Christmas Day Kitten. Christmas can never go by without my remembering a certain little cat. I first saw her when I called to see one of Mrs. Pickering's much loved basset hounds. And there's Mr. Harriet's car. Whew, I've never been in a car like that, have you? They don't make cars like that anymore because this is a story from even before I was born. I looked in some surprise at the furry creature moving quietly down the hall. I didn't know you had a cat, I said to Mrs. Pickering, who was a plumpish, pleasant-faced woman. Mrs. Pickering smiled. We haven't really. Debbie is a stray. She comes here two or three times a week and we give her some food. I don't know where she lives. Do you ever get the feeling that she wants to stay with you? I asked. No, said Mrs. Pickering as she shook her head. She's a timid little thing. Just creeps in, has some food, then slips away. She doesn't seem to want my help in any way. I looked at the little tabby cat again, but she isn't having food today. It's a funny thing, but every now and again, she pops into the sitting room and sits by the fire for a few minutes. I think it's as if she's giving herself a treat. And there's Debbie, the little kitty. The little cat was sitting very upright on the thick rug which lay in front of the fireplace in which the coals glowed and flamed. The three bassets were already lying there, but they seemed used to Debbie because two of them sniffed her in a bored manner and the third merely cocked a sleepy eye at her before flopping back to sleep. Debbie made no effort to curl up or wash herself, or do anything other than gaze quietly ahead. This was obviously a special event in her life, a treat. And there's Debbie and the dogs. Then suddenly, she turned and crept from the room without a sound and was gone. That's just the way it is with Debbie, said Mrs. Pickering, laughing. She never stays for more than 10 minutes or so. Then she's off. I often visited the Pickering home and I always looked out for the little cat. On one occasion, I saw her nibbling daintily from a saucer at the kitchen door. As I watched, she turned and almost floated on light footsteps into the hall and into the sitting room. Debbie settled herself in the middle of the pile of the basset hounds in her usual way, upright, still, and gazing into the glowing fire. This time, I tried to make friends with her, but she leaned away as I stretched out my hand. However, I talked to her softly, and I managed to stroke her cheek with one finger. 
Do you remember what Mrs. Pickering said about Debbie? That she was timid. Do you know what timid means? It means shy. So I think Debbie was a little afraid of Dr. Harriet, but he spoke kindly and softly to her. And she was like, okay, maybe this is a good guy. I'll let him scratch my head. And she did. And he did. Hmm. Then it was time for her to go. And once again, outside she went. She jumped up on the stone wall and down the other side. The last I saw was the little tabby figure flitting away across the grassy field. I wonder where she goes, I murmured. That's something we've never been able to find out, said Mrs. Pickering. There goes Debbie. They live in the country. We live in the city. It was three months later that I next heard from Mrs. Pickering. And it happened to be a Christmas morning. I'm so sorry to bother you today of all days, said Mrs. Pickering apologetically. Don't worry at all, I said. Which of the dog needs attention? It's not the dogs. It's, it's Debbie. She's come to the house and there's something very wrong. Please come quickly. I drove through the empty market square. The snow was thick on the road and on the roofs of the surrounding houses. The shops were closed, but the pretty colored lights of the Christmas trees winked in the windows. And there's Mrs. Pickering. Does she look worried? I think she does. Mrs. Pickering's house was beautifully decorated with tinsel and holly and the rich smell of turkey and sage and onion stuffing wafted from the kitchen. But she had a very worried look on her face as she led me through to the sitting room. Debbie was there, but she was sitting. She wasn't sitting upright in her usual position. She was lying quite still and huddled close to her lay a tiny kitten. I looked down in, am in amazement. What have we got here? It's the strangest thing, Mrs. Pickering replied. I haven't seen her for several weeks. And then she came in about two hours ago, staggered into the kitchen and she was carrying the kitten in her mouth. She brought it in here and laid it on the rug. Almost immediately, I could see that she wasn't doing well. Then she lay down like this, and she hasn't moved since. There's the little kitten. Debbie looks pretty sick. I knelt on the rug and my passed my hand over Debbie's body which Mrs. Pickering had placed on a piece of sheet. She was thin, so very thin, and she was dirty. I knew she didn't have long to live. Is she ill, Mr. Harriet? Asked Mrs. Pickering in a trembling voice. Yes, yes, I'm afraid so, but I don't think she is in any pain. Mrs. Pickering looked at me and I saw there were tears in her eyes. Then she knelt beside Debbie and she stroked the cat's head while the tears fell on the dirty fur. Oh, the poor little thing, I should have done more for her. I spoke gently, nobody could have done more than you did. Nobody could have been kinder and see, she has brought you her kitten, hasn't she? Yes, you are right, she has. Mrs. Pickering reached out and lifted up the tiny bedraggled kitten. Isn't it strange? Debbie knew she was dying, so she brought her kitten here, and on Christmas Day, I bent down and put my hand on Debbie's heart. There was no heartbeat. I'm afraid she has died. I lifted the feather light body, wrapped it in the sheet, and took it out to the car. Let me 
you see the dogs? They're all watching. And this is a sad part, but don't worry. The story doesn't end here. When I came back, <clears throat> Mrs. Pickering was still stroking the kitten. The tears had dried and she was bright eyed as she looked at me. I've never had a cat before, she said. I smiled. Well, it looks as though you've got one now. Oh, I forgot to show you the picture. There's Mrs. Pickering with the little kitten. And see, she's starting to get happy. And she certainly did have a cat. The kitten grew rapidly into a sleek, handsome, and bouncy tabby cat. And Mrs. Pickering called him Buster. He wasn't timid like his little mother. And he lived like a king. And with the ornate collar he always wore, he looked like one too. And there's a picture of Buster. I watched him grow up with delight, but the occasion that always stays in my mind was the following Christmas day, a year after his arrival. I was on my way home after visiting a farmer with a sick cow, and I was looking forward to my Christmas dinner. Mrs. Pickering was at her front door when I passed her house, and I heard her call out, Merry Christmas, Mr. Harriet. Come in and have a drink to warm up. I had a little time to spare, so I stopped the car and I went in. In the house was all the festive cheer of last year and the same glorious whiff of sage and onion stuffing. But this time there was no sorrow, no sadness. There was Buster. He looks like a big cat. He was darting up to each of the Basset Hounds in turn. Ears pricked, eyes twinkling, dabbing a paw at them, and then streaking away. Mrs. Pickering laughed. Buster does tease them so. He gives them no peace. She was right. For a long time, the dogs had led a rather sedate life, gentle walks with their mistress, plenty of good food, and long snoring sessions on the rugs and armchairs. Then Buster arrived. He was now dancing up to the youngest dog again, head on one side, asking him to play. When he started boxing with both paws, it was too much for the Basset, who rolled over with the cat in a wrestling game. <sighs> Come into the garden, said Mrs. Pickering. I want to show you something. She lifted a hard rubber ball from the sideboard and we went outside. Hmm. I wonder what she's going to show Dr. Harriet with a ball. Do you see Buster? Sometimes we think that dogs and cats don't like each other, but I have both a dog and a cat and they are best friends, kind of like Buster and the Basset Hounds at Mrs. Pickering's house. Mrs. Pickering threw the ball across the lawn and Buster bounded after it over the frosty grass, his tabby coat gleaming in the sun. He seized the ball in his mouth and brought it back to his mistress, dropped it at her feet and waited. Mrs. Pickering threw it again and again, and each time Buster brought it back. That, that cat was playing fetch with his mistress. Do you have a dog or a cat that you like to play with? 
I know, I sure do. I gasped. A retriever cat! The Bassets looked on unimpressed. Nothing would ever make them chase a ball. But Buster did it again and, and again, as though he would never tire of it. Mrs. Pickering turned to me. Have you ever seen anything like that? No, I replied. He is a most remarkable cat. We went back into the house where she held Buster close to her, laughing as the big cat purred loudly. Looking at him so healthy and contented, I remembered his mother who had carried her tiny kitten to the only place of comfort and warmth that she had ever known. Mrs. Pickering was thinking the same thing because she turned to me and although she was smiling, her eyes were thoughtful. Debbie would be pleased, she said. I nodded. Yes, she would. It was just a year ago today she, she brought him in, wasn't it? That's right. She hugged Buster again. The best Christmas present I've ever had. And there's Mrs. Pickering with her cat Buster. And that is the end. Well, thank you for listening to my story. It did have a sad part, but it ended so happy. And I want you boys and girls to always remember that sometimes bad things do happen in our lives, but every day is a new day. A day, a day for you to find joy and love and peace. And I hope that today you were able to smile and laugh at the story of Buster and his new mistress, Mrs. Pickering. I hope you have a great winter holiday season, whether it's for Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or solstice, whatever your family enjoys. Until next time, keep reading. Bye-bye.